pollution of air and water introduction when unwanted and harmful things mix with the air water or soil it is said to be contaminated contamination of air water or soil is what we call pollution pollution is mixing of the unwanted substances with any pure substances these unwanted substances are generally harmful to life of humans animals and plants such substances are termed as pollutants polluted sites are quite common near the cities near rivers and open areas vehicles emit smoke which is visible as dark smoke in the atmosphere and can easily be felt as a choking hazard while breathing types of pollution air pollution noise pollution water pollution and soil pollution are the major types of pollution that are harmful to life existing on the earth over the times the clean and pure air and water that our elders talk about has become murkier air pollution the atmosphere is very useful to us as it includes oxygen needed by humans and animals for respiration and carbon dioxide required by green plants for photosynthesis the air gets contaminated by polluting agents such as smoke dust and other harmful gases the presence of these agents makes the air polluted and can even cause various diseases this contamination of air is known as air pollution a thick fog like layer occurs at times it is known as smog a smog is a mixture of smoke and fog that is especially visible during winters sources of air pollution the substances which contaminate the air are called air pollutants there are various sources of air pollution sometimes such substances may come from natural sources like smoke and dust arising from the forest fires or volcanic eruptions pollutants are also added to the atmosphere by certain human activities these include smoke of burning fuel released by cars scooters and other vehicles poisonous gases such as sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide carbon dioxide are released from the factories burning of fossil fuels such as petrol and diesel causes the emission of gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide and also emits unburnt carbon as a pollutant chlorofluorocarbons cfcs used in refrigerators and spray cans deplete the ozone layer smoking by people release harmful substances like carbon monoxide and nicotine into the atmosphere effects of air pollution on environment the major effects of air pollution are the depletion of greenhouse gases the depletion of ozone layer and acid rain the greenhouse effect in the greenhouse effect the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere absorbs the solar radiations emitted out from the surface of the planet and heats up the atmosphere of the earth plants utilize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis thereby decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in air deforestation leads to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in air because number of trees that consume carbon dioxide gets reduced human activities thus contribute to the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere carbon dioxide traps heat and does not allow it to escape into space the other greenhouse gases include methane and water vapor it is because of the increased greenhouse effect that the average temperature of the earth has increased up to 1 degree celsius which is quite alarming the polar ice caps have already started melting at an alarming rate if the earth's temperature 
keeps on rising at this rate, the time is not far when these polar ice caps would melt completely and all the land on the earth will be submerged in water. Acid rain Nitrogen dioxide released from the automobiles, sulfur dioxide released by the burning of fossil fuels mix with the falling rainwater and results into the formation of nitric acid and sulfurous and sulfuric acid causing acid rain. This acid rain contaminates the soil and the water bodies. Nitrogen dioxide plus rainwater is equal to nitric acid. Sulfur dioxide plus rainwater is equal to sulfurous acid. Acid rain causes a considerable harm to buildings. The famous Taj Mahal is losing its colour and sheen due to the acid rain which occurs due to increasing air pollution in and around Agra. Depletion of ozone layer Ozone layer is a kind of a blanket on the earth which saves us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Ozone, O3, is located mainly in the lower portion of the stratosphere, approximately 15 to 35 km above the Earth's surface. This layer is getting depleted due to CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, excessively being used in refrigeration and air conditioners. The CFC destroy ozone in the following way. CFC, UV light, forms Cl atom. Cl plus O3 forms ClO plus O2. Ozone broken down by CFCs. The depletion of the ozone layer D allows large amounts of ultraviolet rays to reach Earth, which can cause skin cancer and cataracts in humans and harm animals also, in plants and other living beings. The effects of air pollution on plants are briefly discussed below. Acid rain spoils the foliage and causes reduction in the growth of many parts of the plants. Deposition of particulate material, that is, dust, cement, carbon and soot, blocks the stomata which hinders not only the normal respiration but also the mechanism of photosynthesis. Pollution causes discoloration of the leaves in many plants and also shows inhibited growth of many other parts of the plants. Air pollution can cause numerous diseases in many animals and human beings. Respiratory problems, lung cancer, bronchitis, allergy, coughing, chest pain are a few to name. Carbon monoxide released by the incomplete combustion of carbon fuels easily gets bonded with hemoglobin present in the blood during breathing and reduces the supply of oxygen. This might lead to headache, nausea and dizziness. Prolonged inhaling of carbon monoxide may lead to death. Thus, we should never sleep in a closed room with burning charcoal hearth during winter nights. Prevention of Air Pollution Plant more trees for absorption of carbon dioxide and release of oxygen in the atmosphere. Start using CNG instead of petrol and diesel in the automobiles. We should use public transport instead of private vehicles like car and bikes. Burning of biodegradable waste should be stopped and be utilized in making compost. More effort should be made to develop alternate sources of energy like solar energy and fuel. Water pollution Usually, there are two main sources of water, surface water and groundwater. Groundwater is comparatively cleaner and better for consumption than surface water which is much more polluted. Factors leading to water pollution. Water pollution means the addition of any such substances to the water which deprives it from its actual use of consumption. Water pollution may be from direct or an indirect contaminants. 
Direct contaminant includes effluents from factories, refineries, or waste from water treatment plants. Indirect contaminant includes pollution reaching through soil or through rainwater. The principal sources of water pollution can be summarized as follows Discharge of chemical waste by industries, Discharge of poorly treated or untreated sewage. Surface runoff containing pesticides or fertilizers, detergents and spilled petroleum products. Surface runoff from construction sites and farms. Leakage of underground storage tank. Effects of water pollution. Contamination of water affects all the living organisms as water is an integral part of all life forms. Polluted water may cause diseases like cholera, dysentery, typhoid, gastroenteritis, hepatitis, diarrhea, and skin diseases. Contamination of river with heavy metals like lead, mercury, copper, nickel, etc. harms both the aquatic and human lives. Residual fertilizers on being washed away into the water bodies encourage the growth of weeds on the surface of the water body. These weeds use most of the dissolved oxygen and affects the aquatic life. The loss of dissolved oxygen from water in water bodies is termed as eutrophication. Prevention of Water Pollution Some steps that must be taken to prevent water pollution are listed below. Garbage should not be thrown into lakes rivers and other water bodies. More trees should be planted near the banks of rivers. Toxic industrial wastes and city sewages should be treated properly before being discharged into the water bodies. Excessive use of fertilizers should be discouraged. Use of synthetic detergents should be minimized. Activities like washing and cleaning should not be done near the source of water. Wells should be covered. Ganga Action Plan The Government of India launched a program called Ganga Action Plan in 1986 to reduce the pollution levels in the river. The GAP aimed at interception and diversion of waste water reaching the Ganga and installation of sewage treatment plan for its treatment. Other pollution controlling activities included were solid waste management, installation of crematoria and provision of low-cost sanitation facilities. The plan also led emphasis on public awareness and involvement to reduce pollution. Although we still have a long way to go before the river is absolutely free of pollution. Potable Water Water which is suitable and fit for the purpose of drinking is said to be potable water. It has a number of minerals which are necessary for the proper functioning of our body and for normal metabolism. Drinking water should be colourless and odourless. It should be free from any suspended impurities, harmful germs, large quantity of salts such as nitrates, cyanides, urea, etc. Water should be treated properly before drinking. Some commonly used methods include the treatment at the water treatment plants, use of filters at home and boiling. Chlorination is a commonly used chemical method for making the water germs free. It is done by adding chlorine tablets or bleaching powder to water. We must be cautious while doing so. We should not use more chlorine tablets than specified.